Deputy McConnell has 30 seconds to introduce. Thank you, Laskin Corla. Minister, this is to ask you to discuss the beef price, beef price the farmers are receiving at the moment for their produce from the factories, to give an overview of discussions at the recent Beef Forum meeting, and also, importantly, Minister, to give an update in relation to the actions and deadlines that were agreed at it. As you know, Minister, uh, uh, beef farmers are under immense pressure at the moment due to the factories taking advantage of the, the pressure uh, the farmers are under and having to release additional uh, cattle into the system. And as a result of that, we're seeing pressure on prices at a time that farmers can't afford to bear it. And we need to see uh, an update um, from yourself in relation to the action that's been taken to address that, and in particular in relation to the actions agreed at the Beef Forum. Two minutes, Minister. Um, as the Deputy will be aware, and as I have mentioned to, to Deputy Kinney earlier, in accordance with competition law, neither I nor my department have any role in determining market prices for any commodity, nor can I intervene in this process. I am conscious that this has been a very difficult year for the sector in terms of weather and the range of challenges associated with it. We have to acknowledge that input, cost, input costs at farm level will be unexpectedly high this year as a result of fodder shortages. At the recent meeting of the Beef Roundtable on the 3rd of October, I highlighted the need for stakeholders to recognise their interdependency. I urged processors to engage positively with farmer suppliers to build the sustainability of the sector as a whole and to ensure a reasonable return for the farmers upon whom the sector lies for its development. It is essential that the position of the primary producer in the supply chain be improved if the industry wishes to build a sustainable future for itself. The Beef Roundtable also included discussions on the potential for producer organisations and the development of new technologies as a way of adding value along the whole supply chain through increased engagement in the bioeconomy. These discussions were aimed at highlighting available tools to build resilience in the sector. I noted that previously uh, I noted that previously at the Beef Roundtable in 2015 a commitment was made to legislate for the recognition of producer organisations in the beef sector. This initiative was supported by all sectoral stakeholders and in February of 2016 a statutory instrument was signed into a law to give a legal basis for stakeholders a legal basis for my department to maintain a register of recognised POs in the beef sector. The recognition of POs will encourage primary producers to form producer organisations and allow farmers to engage collectively with processors. The ultimate aim is to ensure the viable development of production by strengthening farmers' bargaining power with downstream operators. At the roundtable on the 3rd of October, I also asked Borbia to conduct a detailed examination of market dynamics with the cooperation of the industry, taking into account sales of particular cuts into particular segments of the market in order to improve price transparency. One of the unique strengths the agricultural sector has in our, is our shared vision for the sustainable development of the sector in Foodwise 2025. I hope that this positive engagement will continue. The remainder will be included in the report. Deputy McConnell has one minute. Uh, th thank you, Minister, for your response. The unfortunate reality, Minister, is that you've allowed the Beef Forum to become little more than a talking shop. Uh, and that has been reflected by the fact that instead of the farming organisations being in at the Beef Forum and around the table with yourself and the, uh, the factories, they were outside protesting at how they're being squeezed and pressurised and taken advantage of in relation to the current price that they're getting at the factory. We have seen over recent weeks where while the prices have increased across the, across the, across the, the Irish Sea, um, they have been uh, decreasing here to the extent that we are now seeing prices at, uh, dropping below 380, 375 and with additional uh, pressure on them at a, pri a, a, a price per kilo, Minister. That is simply unacceptable. And the last time this Beef Forum met was in February last year. You weren't actually planning on having a meeting until the end of this month. I called a few, uh, th three weeks ago for it to be brought forward and for it to be dealt with immediately. Um, thankfully, you did decide to do that. But too late, Minister. Where were you in terms of meeting with the meat factories whenever the, spotter, the, the, the drought was on over the summer to ensure that they wouldn't take advantage of it? Um, unfortunately, what we're seeing is mostly what you've had was uh, talks, discussions, considerations, but no real action Minister. or delivery for the farmers. And can I ask you just to, to, to clarify what actions were agreed in particular and how, Minister, did you hold the, the factories to account for the fact that they are delivering lower prices to farmers at a time when they simply Minister can't afford Jewish to bear them? Well, I, I find it slightly uh, confusing that the deputy would, on the one hand, be of the view that the, the beef forum is only a talking shop, and then at the same time he, he, he you know, makes a, a call and makes play of the fact that he made a call for that talking shop to convene. I, I repeat what I, what I said to, to Deputy Kinney. By law, neither I nor the forum has any role 
in respect of price. Now, the, the initiatives that we have taken in respect of trying to deliver greater clout to the primary producer, to the beef farmers, to the suckler farmers, for whom we uh, discussed earlier, other initiatives. One of the areas where we have tried to promote is producer organisations. In other words, that, uh, to try and avoid a situation where one farmer drives up and delivers cattle and is a price taker. That true organisation of a large number of farmers together they're able to engage from a position of strength with, primary, with, with the processing sector. And that's the advantage of producer organisations. And if you look at other big uh, beef uh, economies, for the French, for example, producer organisations are a, you know, a key part of the architecture and enable farmers to engage from a position of greater strength, at least, than they can engage oh as, as single farmers. And I think we need to, we need to develop that uh, further. We have Final. The, the legislative framework for them. We have approved facilitators, uh, which haven't uh, been activated yet. And I think there's a role there that you know needs to be exploited. Uh, as for, I mean, price, Deputy, you know, you know, that there is nothing the forum can do on price. Final. That's it. Final question. Um, yeah, Minister, we understand you can't dictate the price. Um, and there's not something that a government um, can control or uh, decide. But what you can do, Minister, is hold the meat factories to account. And what you can also do is ensure that there's transparency in the pricing system and in the price that farmers are getting. And unfortunately, Minister, you have been doing neither of those, simply throwing your hands in the air and not grasping and using the position you have to maximum capacity by really holding the meat factors to account and ensuring a light is shone in relation to how they are actually treating farmers and the prices that they're being given. Why, for example, the significant price gap with the UK which has been increasing in recent months? Why is it that in recent weeks um, we have seen the gap between European prices and Irish prices uh, uh, be, uh, diverge so much? These are issues which you fail to hold the factories to account on, Minister. Um, and indeed, again, we saw over the summer, whenever the drought was impacting, whenever this was coming down the tracks, a failure by you to really maximise your influence to actually ensure that factories were told that under no circumstances can they take advantage of farmers and, uh, and profit here on the back of the pressure that, that, that they are under. Oh um, Minister, it's time that you really did take more control and uh, interaction in relation to this and ensure that there is transparency. And can I ask you, Minister, Final in relation to uh, the, uh, the, the explanations you got and the further engagement that you're going to have in coming weeks with the factories, what have you decided and agreed Minister, to do and what actions will you take? Minister, one minute. The engagement uh, at the forum was quite useful in terms of all of the factors that influence on the market. Uh, for example, uh, we've discussed it earlier uh, with Deputy McGrath, the, the impact that weather has had here, but the weather phenomenon was, was one that impacted right across Europe, and it resulted in, and if you look at any analysis of the numbers of cattle that are being slaughtered, it resulted in increased uh, downward pressure because of the volume of beef that was uh, being slaughtered out as a result of uh, the challenge. For example, uh, we would normally have had in, in summertime and, and, and early autumn a market in Scandinavian countries, Sweden in particular, for cow beef. Uh, that didn't uh, materialise this year to any great extent because in that country there was a significant slaughter out of cows there themselves because of fodder. So the, the market is complex and dynamic and uh, you know, we had engagements around all of that at the forum. Um, but you know, as I repeated earlier, uh, we don't have a role, and nor do I have a role, in telling the factories they must pay um, a certain price. I did encourage the factories to engage and the forum is usually a place where farm organisations and the factories uh, engage uh, intensively on these matters. And the, the commitment was given by the processors at the forum that they were open to uh, further engagement either at the forum or bilaterally between farm organisations and, and, and meat processors. We and I would welcome that further engagement. To, uh